This is an Akashic Record reading for Restoring Balance. And I have some notes here. And this was what I gathered the very first time when I went into your reading before the camera <laughs> broke and I had to replace it. Um, but before that, when I went into it the first time, uh, there were several things that came through while I was getting your code name. And so luckily, because that took me a while to relay that, but luckily the camera didn't freeze so badly that I stopped it before I had gotten all of that out. Uh, so most of it I have in my notes that I can share with you. So firstly, I pulled three items. I always pull crystals, statues, something, whatever I'm guided to pull. And so there were three things that I pulled and I don't remember what all of them were. And sadly, that wasn't in my notes, um, what all three were. But you also had three guides come through. And so that was significant there, the three and the three. Now, one of the things that I know for sure I definitely pulled was my guardian dragon. And specifically, a guardian dragon that felt significant to me and also uh, after I pulled the items I actually I have a stool and right now I'm I just realized I'm using a different stool <laughs> normally normally the stool that I use um, it actually has eagle talons for the legs it has eagle talons that are grabbing onto three, or I think four actually, it has four legs. It holds on to four crystal balls. And I had actually never noticed that before, even though I use it all the time and it sits with me all the time, but I've just never registered it. And so when I sat down, like the first thing that I noticed was the talons on the feet. And I thought, that's really interesting. And um, it just felt to me like this is part of the message too. And that's why I'm noticing it right now. And then you actually had, okay, I'm going to get to the other crystals that I have first before I go on, actually. That's the order I'm feeling to do this in. Uh, now, this one, I'm pretty certain as well that this was one of the items that I pulled last time. This is my crystal quartz wand. And I just felt like some very pure, um, clearing kind of energies coming in when I was pulling this. And then the third one, I'm not sure uh, which crystal it was. But during this, during this uh, take, whatever you want to call it, this time, uh, I actually pulled a few more things anyway. But uh, I can't remember if it was this one. This is one of my white stones. I don't remember what this crystal is. Um, and this is my green fluorite. So sometimes I lose the papers that go with these. So when you buy them in the shop, they always give you a, like a card that says this is the crystal, blah, 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 something about what it does. But sometimes I lose those. <laughs> and now this time I grabbed these, these two crystals again. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> um, but... These are specifically, I bought these for Wolf to help him balance his energies. Um, well, and this one is kind of broken, so I have to be careful with this one. I obviously wasn't careful <laughs> enough <laughs> before, <laughs> but um, okay. So place that one there. But again, with the, the balancing energies uh, coming in, uh, the name, and then this crystal. And then the last one that, that I have here is 
my selenite wand. My camera went blurry for a second. Okay, but we're back. Okay, so as long as it doesn't freeze like crazy, we should be good. Um, so yeah, this is my selenite wand, and this is all about clearing your energies, clearing your auric field, and also, again, a, a crystal about higher energies coming to you. And one of the things that kind of stood out to me last time was you had another guide who came in and she had a very angel energy. She was female, a very angel energy. Um, but what I remember is that at first I wasn't sure what she was. I wasn't sure if she was an angel or what she was. And then I realized, no, this is an angel, but it's specifically coming in with a divine feminine energy. And so it felt very flowing and very creative and intuitive. And that isn't normally the energy that I feel when I'm feeling an angel. Even if it's female, I definitely would say that I feel more of a masculine energy, like divine authority, divine will. Um, things more of that nature. This one specifically felt like creativity and kind of a, a laughing joy kind of feeling too. So it feels almost a little bit more like a fairy to me, but she wasn't a fairy. She was an angel specifically. And she actually came down um, a little bit after I visualized the light around you. And that was interesting too. Um, when I visualized the light around you, it didn't really go around you like how I normally see it. It came straight down like a cylinder beam, like a beam me up Scotty kind of thing. And it was white. And then there were all these kind of balls and uh, like sparkly lights. And a lot of them were in the shape of these different balls. Um, and then it was really interesting because one of them had a very specific shape. And I knew, okay, I've seen this before. This is like some kind of decoration, something. But I don't know even if there's a name for this specific kind of decoration. And so I knew I wasn't going to be able to describe it or anything. So I was just going to say, you know, lit up sparkly balls or something. And then it was really weird. I walked out into the basement and I live with other people and uh, in Canada they have basements in America they didn't but here they have basements like a, a big one where you have like rooms and stuff so um, we stay in the basement and there are all these other rooms where people store things other people who live in the house and when I uh, left the room momentarily I turned and I saw over on the other side of the basement this exact shape. Someone had pulled it out of one of the storage rooms, I guess, and put it there. So um, I can show you what this looks like. Looked like that. <laughs> so that was that was pretty you know, weird to me that I saw it and then I went out and it was literally a physical one sitting right there. So. And like I said, then this, this angel, she kind of came down into the center of this light. Uh, this cylinder beam that had come around you. And what I remember from this is, like I said, she felt very creative, flowing, intuitive. But with her is when I got the code name Restoring Balance. And I felt this, um, this energy like something was passing through you. It didn't feel like she was saying... Um, restore balance or get more balanced in your energies it didn't feel like that to me it felt like almost this 
energy of restoring balance was coming through you. And then, you know, I realized from your questions, one of your questions, it's asking what your light, your language transmissions is for. And so I realized, okay, so you are already a little bit aware that there is something passing through you. And okay, should I go to the first guide? Okay, I'm going to go to the, the third guide now that came in because um, this female angel, she was actually the second energy that came in, the second guide that came up. So the third one that came up, it actually was coming through you. There again, it was coming through you. It was coming through your picture. Even the, the second guide when I saw her in the light with you, she, I was more feeling her with you. And a lot of the time what will happen is the guide will literally come through the picture. And that's the only reason I have a picture there. I don't do anything with the picture. I don't, I never look at it hardly at all, except when I'm visualizing the light. And so it's just a way of me connecting to the person's guides. And normally I feel them come through and they are standing around me. Or sometimes when I visualize the light, I'll feel them come down with the light or come in some other way with the light a lot of the time. Um, but with you, this, this energy was specifically like coming out of you, this third guide. And this one felt very male. And... Uh, again, an, an angel kind of energy it felt like, but at the same time, they did both feel extraterrestrial to me. And maybe even that was part of my, um, you know, trying to place them at first. Maybe that was even part of the reason because they are also extraterrestrial, it felt like to me. And this guide. Yeah, okay, I'm <laughs> being reminded. Um, he had a very teacher energy. It felt, he felt like a teacher. He felt very calm, but specifically that was one of the things um, that they were specifically saying was teacher, a uh, teacher-like energy, and also that you have that as well, and that some of that is something that you're taking on from him, from this guide, and that you are bringing through. Now, I'll get to the first guide. So this, this guide came immediately as soon as I surrounded myself in the light. This guide came right up and surrounded you, obviously. After I surrounded myself and I surrounded you, this, this guide came up. And he was actually a dragon. But he had a very interesting energy. He did not only feel like a dragon. He looked like a dragon. His face and his body and he was flying. But he didn't only carry a dragon energy for some reason. He also carried a bird energy, which is why I was seeing the feet with the talons on the stool. And this had to do, a lot of it was the way he was flying, the way he was acting, the sounds he was making. It just felt very bird-like, even though he looked like a dragon. And so it didn't feel really like just a full-on dragon or like a normal dragon to me. It felt like he was a mix somehow like he was part dragon and part bird um not so not just your typical mythical dragon he definitely had another energy with him as well that he was carrying so check my notes for a second and i think that that was pretty much all that came through when I was getting your code name. So that was before the reading even happened. 
that was just me uh, getting the code name. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, okay, they're reminding me. I need to surround myself in light now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the selenite on my lap here as well. That's a very calming energy coming through. Very calming energy. And the color is black. And I'm actually being reminded that the first guide that came in was specifically a guardian for you. I don't know if I already said that or not, but I'm being reminded of it again. So that is significant that he is protecting you from outside influences, which is what black can often represent. It represents a stillness as well. And he did not feel very still to me. So that's, that's interesting. Um, he felt very animalistic. Now, your other guide, the male guide, the male angel did feel very still and a lot of healing energies coming through. I'm going to go ahead and visualize you surrounded now. Okay, but they're doing this for me. What is that? Oh, geez. God, they just reminded me of, of something else that uh, came through during. Uh, the first attempt when I got your code name. So I was just visualizing the light and they actually surrounded you and it immediately and the beam came down and then the beam kind of took on uh, the shape of a dagger. And it looked white and there was like a, a darker handle, like copper or bronze, something like that. And I saw this like a snake wrapped around it. And the reason that they're showing me that was a very clear image. And the reason that they're showing me that is because actually when I got your code name, I saw this uh, snake wrapped around your arm. Um, not like an actual snake, but like a piece of jewelry uh, in the form of a snake. And it was, it was going up your arm. And I felt a, that this was representing a goddess. So really, this is really like a fourth guide that was kind of coming in kind of indirectly. But this felt like a goddess energy around you, maybe even more than one goddess that was coming in. And obviously, this this is also a kind of Egyptian kind of symbol to me as well a lot of egyptians will wear the snake and they'd wear you know the the arm jewelry in that way so this also it makes me think or feel of egypt So the first thing they're showing me, they're still showing me this dagger, this white dagger. That, and it, it's uh, the blade is white. It seems almost like crystal, like a crystal dagger, but it's sharp, too. It's specifically sharp. And 
they're showing me this image of this dagger flying and like cutting into something um, just where it will like stay. So almost like almost like throwing a dart against something and it stays into the board. So there's something very, very specific and very sharp with with this energy coming in. So just give me a second to tune in here. And they're showing me this blade spinning and spinning. And as it's spinning, it's going down deeper and deeper and deeper. It's like it's going straight into the heart of something, straight into the heart of the matter, straight into the heart of the situation. And it's blunt, it's precise. So it's it's very direct. It isn't shy, it isn't coy, it's graceful, it has presence, but it speaks without hesitation. And your guides are saying, that you need to speak without hesitation. So when something comes through, you need to say it and you need to pass it on to others in all areas of your life. So they're saying this is not just about the fourth question. They're saying that this is a block that you have where sometimes you are hesitant about your gifts and about what you have to give to others and directing others. So there's really a, a mix here with these guides. So again, that balance, because you have the one guide who is very calm, very direct and has a, a teacher energy. So this guy doesn't hold back, but he feels very calm at the same time. Whereas then you have your dragon. Now he doesn't hold back, but in a different way. He is, he's animalistic, you know, which means he, flies wherever he feels, he says whatever he feels, he does whatever he wants. Not only what he feels, but whatever he wants. Whatever feels good to him, whatever feels good for him, you know, or for another. So he follows his instincts and he does whatever comes instinctually natural to him. And he just lets it all go and just flies in, in any direction. He doesn't care what it sounds like. He doesn't care that he's uh, that he appears like a dragon and he makes bird calls. <laughs> you know, he doesn't care that he looks silly with the way he flies. Maybe he doesn't care how he comes across to others, to other people or other dragons in his case, or other bird dragons. <laughs> he is just, he's restoring balance. He's restoring balance by being who he is, by being himself, and by being direct. Now this guide too, the female guide, she's more playful, and more divine feminine, more creative, more free, more let go. 
so not as direct in some ways, but still, she lets it all go. She flows. So she's she's more of the, the dreamer of the group. So it's almost like the dragon is more instincts. The male guide is more logic. And the female guide is more heart. And at the same time, they're all flowing intuitively. So they're all flowing with spirit. They're all flowing with their soul and their soul's calling. Their soul's calling is just to be whatever they are. So you're doing the right thing and you're fulfilling your, your purpose. And it's just about being who you are and Whatever you're feeling to do is what you need to be doing at that moment. And you know that. Part of you knows that. Even consciously, you know that you're on the right path. You know that you're in tune. You know that you are getting things accurately, that you do get things accurately. So this is a confirmation to you. And I feel... Okay, and part of the reason your guides are saying part of the reason that the camera fell out then, specifically with your reading, was again a confirmation to you. Because then I wrote you and I told you what happened and you had received that information from your guides specifically already. Even that is a confirmation to you. So your guys just want to confirm, yes, you're on the right path. You're doing the right things. Also, they're saying that you're an authority figure. And again, they're showing me the, the snake going up the arm. They're reminding me that this is specifically a symbol of wisdom. So this is... This has a, a wise energy with it. The snake goddess is very wise, very understanding. So you're an authority figure. So this is a calling for you. This is your direction to to go in I feel like this is like a, a full-time thing for you I don't know if it is now or if it will be later but this needs to be a full a full-time thing for you where you put all your attention in this one area so not spread out. This is your calling. And what they mean by that is this spiritual calling that you have. And they're talking about like career. And this might be present. You already know this. You're already doing this. All time is happening simultaneously. So sometimes present can feel like past or, or future or whatever to me. But I'm going to say present. This feels more, more current to me. So this could be that it's happening now or that it's just so like 
present in your energy field that this is what you're supposed to be doing. It could be that also that it's coming through like it's present because it will happen because of how sound it is. It could be either of those things or even both. Because it's coming through with a very sound energy, a certain energy. And that's another thing that they're saying. They're saying to be certain of who you are. Be certain of your presence here, of your calling, of your mission, they're saying. Okay, so they're saying that this is this is a star seed mission. To do this, what you're doing. Part of this has to do with question four, with the light transmissions. They're saying this is for everyone. This is for everybody who will hear it, anybody who will listen to it. So they're saying don't be shy with it. This is for anyone who will hear it. And specifically they're saying and it's to restore balance. It's to restore the balance of, of the masculine and, and fit. The feminine and masculine. They want me to say the feminine first, just because the masculine always comes first. So even that is restoring balance a little bit. So Yeah, they're even showing me like um even when you have to fill out a form or something and it asks you what gender you are, it always says are you male on the left or female on the right. This energy always comes first in in everything in our society <laughs> pretty much. So they're saying that this, this goddess energy is, is what wants to come through. You have this masculine presence there too, though. So again, restoring balance. But for a time, they're saying that they really want to call up the divine, the divine feminine which they're saying isn't what we've thought. So they don't mean this girly, flowery thing. It has power. It holds presence. So it doesn't mean you are weaker or more intuitive. It doesn't mean you're more emotional. It, it's like it means everything in a divine feminine way. But not in the way that you've thought, not in the way that we've thought. So they're saying to call up your will. And will can be divine feminine. Hmm. So I feel like they're saying that even the way the angels came through, where the where the female energy came across one way and the, the male energy came across one um, another way. These can be both in their way. You can have a masculine energy that is really in the flow and very creative and very inspired. And very, they're saying even more un, unfocused, even more more allowing and they don't mean unfocused in a negative way here or even unfocused exactly or, or like unclear but they mean able to adapt 
and not focused on one thing precisely, but more, uh, more encompassing, more all encompassing. Whereas the male energy tends to be more, more focused on one thing, like, like the sword that was coming in, like the dagger. And so you need to have that energy too. But at the same time, they're saying the divine feminine aspect has that. It's like she has it in her way. So you can have divine feminine will and you can have divine masculine flow and creativity. You can have divine masculine psychic ability and the, the inner nature, your intuition, or you can have divine feminine manifestation and the outer the outer nature or in other words manifesting on the outer world and taking actions so they're saying that it doesn't it doesn't lack it but it it is a little bit different it does have a different feeling to it, a different vibration and a different calling or a different purpose even. But you're, you are incorporating, you are here to incorporate all aspects of the all. This really is about restoring the balance. Is they're saying that there's so many things that are unbalanced in the world right now with race, like things are are lopsided. Like look to one more than the other, or classify one as higher and the other lower. So this is what they're coming through with, not just about race and and gender, but also. They're saying balancing emotions, so bringing healing. Because they're saying, like, there's too much anger. This, this needs to come to a balance. Or even there's not enough of the right anger. That needs to come to a balance. They're saying there's not enough courage. There's too much fear. Or there's exaggerated courage in, in the wrong place at the wrong time that gets you to do something that isn't really needed. You don't really need to have courage for that thing. So almost like a, a misguided courage. Which is more like a having to prove yourself kind of energy. They're saying that this is this is masculine, like like wars and and but this this is also feminine, like like I'm feeling underneath, so you know, rise to the surface. So this is again, this is all encompassing. They're also saying that you're a woman, but only in body. And they're not saying that you're male or that you're female. But they are expressing this and androgynous nature, this androgynous quality that you have. You can be either or whenever you need to be. And that's something that they want to, to call up this divine expression. Yes, I'm in the right place. I'm in the right time. And doing whatever is needed, whatever is necessary. I am in the right place at the right times 
and I'm guided to take the right actions or say the right things or do the right things. Okay.
Okay, they're showing me this image of of a group of people. And at first they were all standing in a line and they were holding like chalices, all of them. And this just had to do with them showing me like almost a ceremony or something. Or that they're all doing the, the same thing. The pictures they were showing me were all about them doing things in a unified way. But specifically these, these chalices, they were also almost coming through with like toasting something, toasting someone's success or giving like a group toast. but also that they do things all at the same time and they work together in unison, almost like they're one being, but they are a group. And then there's one person specifically who is leading them. And this is a male person. But again, I get this feeling of being androgynous. And I get that from all of them, like they're the same being type. And that they all think in this way where they incorporate all of these energies. I'm definitely feeling an Arcturian energy. There's the word Arcturian coming in over and over. That's one of the words coming in. And this is a group that you've had multiple lifetimes with. Where you were in this group. Doing these ceremonies and these religious or spiritual practices. And the way that they were showing me these people in the, the second image that I got, in the first image, they were all wearing white. They looked kind of angelic or even like Pleiadian or something. And there was even like a, an elven kind of energy with them uh, because elvins do feel a bit more androgynous. They're all very regal, very royal. They know their purpose. And they have a lot of will or a lot of authority, like they, they know who they are, the elves. They know they're worthy, they know they're royal. But then in the second image they were sh um, that they were showing me, they all had these like, like they were wearing like monk uh like monk uniforms, like the monk robes. They were red and and kind of an orange yellow, like like the monks wear, like Buddhist monks wear specifically, Buddhist monks. So they were coming in with this idea of almost like a religious group, like religious practices, but that have a very spiritual nature. Because Buddhism, it's not so much a religion as a, a spirituality. 
at the same time, it's a certain path, a certain branch of that spirituality. But it's not like Christianity that tells you this is the right way. This is how you have to do it if you want to get to God, get to heaven, you know. Or even from a spiritual point, we could say, you know, be become God yourself or reach the divine within yourself. There's a specific way to do it. Whereas Buddhism is more more open, more accepting of other religious beliefs. So they're not closed-minded, but at the same way, they have a certain way of doing things that they've found and how they operate to attain, they're saying bliss, euphoria. And also they're saying oneness. Again, they're coming in with this... Uh, unification a unified feeling but getting to the past lives you've had multiple lifetimes with these Arcturians And I'm also, they're also sending a name. They're sending an L name. It sounds like Lillian. Lillian, some, something, something like this. Lilith, Lilith perhaps. But it's an L, it's a, no, I don't feel like it's Lilith, but it's an L sounding name. I feel like this is your name in one of these lifetimes. And you're assisting this man who's leading somehow. I don't feel like you're the leader, but you're helping him in some way. And he knows you personally. I feel like, like he knows all of them personally and they all help him in some way. But it's not really about him. He's helping them just as equally. He, he's just leading them. He's the leader of this. At the same time, they all come through with their own abilities and their own gifts. He's not blocking them. And if they want to go off on their own, even branch out on their own, or, or guide others, even even guide others with this particular path that he's showing them. 
he is not in any way blocking that or, or blocking them. So he he's an open teacher. There's an openness with him. You're helping him to set things up like in a physical way. Things have to be set up in a very specific manner. Things have to be in order. You're like an assistant in a way for physical things. Specifically, they're coming in with physical things you're helping this man with. As a for instance, if he is going to be speaking, then you're going to write down the words like like he will dictate them to you and and you you will write them down or you you will um what gather them for him like gather everything that that he needs for him whether it's his words um like what he's going to be saying or his clothes you know, everything he's going to need, you make sure it's in order, it's there, it's prepared for him. So you're very orderly. There's something about divine order coming th through you. And this isn't only with your mouth. So I'm guessing they mean uh, question four. This is only in that way. This, this is in every area. So you bring order. And in your own life, you have to have order. Things can't be messy around you. It, it will disorient your energy. It does disorient your energy. It's very disorienting for you to have not uh, a silent space and have, they're saying, and have specific things that you need to get done at certain times, at the same time to, to flow with them so they can change, they can adapt, you can move it around in an order that you more prefer, but they are saying order and they mean physical order and like even like a calendar of events and things. And this is something coming through you. So they're saying to honor that. To honor this aspect of yourself because they're saying that it's important. Because this really unifies your yourself with yourself. It unifies your energy. And also it purifies it. It's a purification to cleanse the physical surroundings around you and to have things structured in a certain way. So they're saying you were the order 
to things. You were guiding this man in a physical way, even whilst he was guiding you in an emotional way, in an intuitive way, in a mental way. You are guiding him in a physical way, making sure everything is prepared for, for him because he's very busy and he needs someone to, to have order, to maintain an order around him. And this, this keeps him clear. They're saying you might say you're his right hand in a way. Because the right hand is the more physical hand. The right hand is the instinctual hand. So they're saying that you had to really kind of meld with this person. You had to get really in tune with what is it that they desire? How do they like things? How do they want things to be set up to be arranged what is going to help them right now you had to feel him out you had to be very in tune with his vibration and just put things there without him asking so you were very intuitive in this physical way during this lifetime it wasn't just like a secretary who does whatever the person asks them to do whatever the person asks for. You were specifically getting in a rhythm of knowing what he likes and being in tune with his energy where you don't have to know what he wants that day. If it's going to be different, you can feel it out. You can judge based on the, the intuitive rhythm that you're in. With with this person, it's like you you're in his rhythm. You you know his rhythm intuitively. You know what he's gonna want, even if it changes, even if it's different. So you can just kind of feel out. He'll need this today, or not even that. This is almost like almost like you can feel from him if he's thinking oh I'll need this today he walks in and it's there because you like heard the thought and you arranged it so in a physical way things need to be put in order in place for you they're saying to to breathe and to really get get calm and centered in your own vibration and they're saying that when you're not doing this when things are sloppy messy around you schedule a lot um, schedule wise or cleanliness wise this you'll feel that you'll feel a disruption whereas if you were more on time and more things arranged around you in a polite way. I don't know why they're saying polite way, a courteous way to yourself even, they're saying. And, and to others. But specifically to you, it's like a courtesy to your energy. It's like almost being polite to yourself, being polite to your energy to know and and even to your guides since they like things to be kind of arranged um but specifically to you they're still saying specifically to you this is going to help you to have that that focus so when things are all messy and all over the place you can't channel But you also can't think properly or do things properly. So this is a very structured, clear 
energy coming through. And they're, they're reminding me of the, of the crystals that I had, all these, all these white, white crystals and, and even, even these, these, these lighter, lighter colored crystals. This one is like a, it's like a light pink color. It's coming, it's coming up a little bit, uh, orange in the camera. It's more like a reddish pink in the center there. So yeah, a lot of light colors coming in, even with the crystals. And this is because there's a very uh, high energy and a very clear vibration coming through, a pure vibration coming through, and loving as well, healing. And an expression of the divine. So an expression of the divine should be pure it should be clear it should be purified so they're saying to clear your house within as well okay another lifetime okay so they're coming to the first question uh is there damage files broken in my akashic record okay Oh, okay, but they were saying that this is um, question three. What do you see when you look at my space essence being three? One thing there's what, what okay, what they want to say about that specifically is is order, restoring balance and order, bringing an, an order to things and, and a oneness or a unification to things and becoming unified within as well. So, yeah, they're saying, you know, cleaning, cleaning your house inwardly as well. So your inner being as well. So moving to this question, question one. Okay, so I'm exchanging my selenite for my fluorite. So now they're actually showing me a lifetime where you are a fairy being. This dragon guide, this dragon bird guide who came in, uh, they're showing me him as well. You are on him and you are like riding him, but he looks more like... Uh, he looks more like a, a dinosaur. Uh, oh, wow. You totally reminded me of what that was called. I'm sitting here going, okay, I do not remember what that dinosaur is called. Okay. Would not for the life of me have remembered that name. Triceratops. <laughs> he looks like a triceratops. I would not have thought of that <laughs> word. Okay. So... He looks like a triceratops kind of, but he has these these wings. Only they're saying to almost think of it more like a more like a lizard or like a chameleon that has the the things out. So that's why they were showing me the triceratops because it 
because he has these like things near his like neck. So they're showing me that like fan shape like the Triceratops has. And also his wings were more almost like gliders kind of. They were they were that same kind of kind of uh like a, a wing. Like a wing that would be on a lizard. So like that kind of silk material like on a like like a chameleon a lizard they're specifically saying though but he had a big body like a triceratops and he had this thing around around his neck in a similar shape but more like more like a chameleon type of type of thing going out like that. Okay. So for some reason they're coming in specifically with that shape. Because they're also saying it will help you connect to his energy more to know what he looked like in the lifetime. So this is one of the lifetimes that you need to clear up. So fairies process things for the planet that they are on. Especially if the planet is undergoing something um, physically, like we are here, we're really disrupting the planet in many ways. So fairies go through these things to unpollute the energies and again to balance the energies. So it's like they take on those energies empathically and into themselves and, and release them for the planet and for the beings on it. So sometimes they can seem naughty. Sometimes they can seem low vibrational. And it's actually because they're higher vibrational. They're able to, to do this, to take this on. But a lot of people see them as almost lower vibrational because of their attitudes or because of issues they can develop. But that's the reason. It's because the planet has these in her field and they're helping to take care of that. And so they're absorbing some things that aren't necessarily nice or helpful for the world and its inhabitants, whatever the whatever world they are on. Or you can have a fairy who is processing mostly only the higher emotions, you know. They're not taking taking on these lower emotions. They're not pressing <laughs> they're not processing lower things for the earth that they're on. Or the world that they're on, whatever planet it is. Okay. Okay, so specifically the reason that I have this green fluoride out then is because you were processing emotional negativity and you were doing this purposefully. Even if sometimes you didn't necessarily know that consciously, this is why you were there. It was what you were there for. So this was your soul's purpose as this being type during that lifetime. Now, and they're specifically saying that you are not that being type. I don't feel that you are like your soul is, is uh, that being type. So they're not saying that you are specifically that being type. Just that you had a lifetime as that being type. And so your soul's purpose had to do with the being type that you were for that lifetime. So that's what your soul's purpose was for that lifetime. 
But during this lifetime, you added a lot of things to your auric field. They're specifically saying depression was one of the things, guilt, a lot of lower feelings, anger, but more sadness. The anger feels more slight. Feels like you were processing a lot of. I am getting resentment, guilt, resentment, shame. So lower end vibrations and very deep ones also. But at the same time, you were happy as well. You didn't just feel this all the time. And this is why, you know, you, you have your... Uh, Triceratops lizard thing, <laughs> guy, you know, being, I don't want to say thing, but <laughs> the Triceratops lizard man being, okay, <laughs> um, you know, so you're, you're flying on him and, you know, you're having your, your fairy adventures. So you're not stuck and there's definitely a sense of freedom and adventure and, and also birthright. They're saying like, you know, you're deserving, you know, you are, um, you accept yourself. Even these lower emotions, you accept them. But you are processing them at different points. So in other words, your, your mood fluctuates. In, in this lifetime as the fairy. Your mood is, is fluctuating. You can be very peaceful and still and calm and playful when you're just in, in your energy or when you are in the energy of a lot of other fairies, even like a fairy gathering or something they're giving me a feeling of, or even animals, a lot of animals around you. But when you're feeling something wrong with the planet, the environment that you're in, some other dimension on this world, this is very, very toxic for you, very heavy for you. And you are feeling these things for the planet. So this is something that they want to make you aware of. A lifetime they want to make you aware of. That there are still some things, specifically depression, guilt, resentment, hate, that you need to, to clear out. And for some reason, specifically Another word is backstabbing coming in, specifically backstabbing. And I'm not saying specifically because it's more significant or anything. Even that is coming in a little bit more slight, but specifically just because it's not as general as like anger or, or resentment or something. It's specifically backstabbing. And not like you want to do this, but like someone has done this to you or, or more like the planet that you're on, backstabbing the planet that you're on. Like this planet is caring for you in all these manner of ways, feeding you, clothing you, etc. You know, like planets do for everyone. And you are treating her like this. Why are you doing that? This this kind of almost defensive energy. But again, this is something the planet itself is, is feeling. And you are helping it process that. So it was your soul's purpose then, but it's out of alignment with, with you now. For what you're doing now. For your soul's purpose now. So for harmony, this needs to be cleansed. But I have the feeling you know how to do that or that they can tell you how to do that. 
I'm not getting anything specific at all of this is how you need to do it. Just more a feeling of like, she'll know how to do it. Or even she does know how to do it. You had another lifetime as a fairy as well. And this lifetime is in a more balanced place. They want to bring that up as well. And I don't know why. I, I feel like that's something for you to explore. They're not telling me why they're bringing that lifetime up. <clears throat> Even with that, I'm getting Arcturian. But then I'm also getting Pleiadian. So you've had some, you know, lives around. I feel a second group coming in. Um, they're saying Pleiadian specifically. And these these energies are, are just greeting you more than anything. They're just kind of saying hello. They're helping you to purify yourself. They're helping you to be in communication with these transmissions that you're receiving. I feel like some of these transmissions are, are from this Arcturian group. So there may be more than one group that's um, bringing down this these languages for you, this uh, transmission for you. Um, but this is coming in specifically, this one Arcturian group is, is one of the ones that are speaking through you and that are aiding you uh, with aligning the planet in this way. So I don't know if you know that, you, you probably do or you might have a hint of that. I'm not sure. But they're specifically coming in with this Arcturian uh, word over and over. Arcturian, Arcturius, a lot of that. And one of these lifetimes in the fairy, uh, as, as a fairy, where you had a more like, you know, higher vibrational, more stable environment that you were in. One of them was in Octarius. And that's more specifically the one that they want to point out, is the one in Octarius. The one in the Pleiades, uh, maybe they'll reveal for another time. Oh, okay, so they're saying... They're saying that that could come through someone else. If it were the right time, they would even say that through me right now. Uh, so that doesn't have to be given to you specifically. This Arcturian one, though, they would rather you explore. They want you to look at that. 
And then there's something that you need to get from that specifically. So they're saying order. Again, I get a feeling that they're kind of uh, ending the reading now. Um, but they're saying order. And restoring balance. And restoring order even with your own environment. So this is emotional too, not just physical. This is releasing toxic energies like stress, different emotional energies that come up, specifically stress. If you want to be in order, you have to slow down and, and not rush. You have to think clearly so you can't really have stress but that just means getting calm and coming into your center and then you are naturally feeling fine you're naturally not that you shut off lower things but you are just more calm you are more still you're more at peace So they're saying that that's something to cultivate, to be still at all times. And peace is something that they're sending you. And this is, this is both groups, especially the Arcturian group, I feel this strong. They're specifically feeling... Uh, Sending you peace, sending you a feeling of peace. Okay. Okay, yes, so that is the end of the reading. <laughs> this is such a calm energy coming in. So thank you very much, Restoring Balance, for allowing me to do this reading for you. And I hope that it's given you some insight into your soul's purpose and, you know, what what your energy does, what your energy is there for. And what you are bringing in. There's something about growth coming in. Um, how, how you are, how, oh, how you're assisting others with, with their growth as well as growing yourself but also how you are assisting others with their growth and assisting the earth with restoring balance. So thank you very much. Namaste.